What's going on guys? It's your boy JFT. Now, whether or not you watch this event, I don't know, but I'm pleasing the hardcore MMA fans who follow this channel. If you are a hardcore MMA fan, you will respect the fact that I'm covering this. It's TKO47. If you're one of those people that has UFC Fight Pass, that loves all the events that they put on there, some of the indie scenes, the fighters on the way up, the results for TKO47 that aired tonight. If you were watching hockey playoffs, I understand, but make sure to go back and watch this event. This event was actually a really, really good one. I'm just going to mention quickly the prelims. Julius Trimaletti fought a heavy striker after eight amateur fights. For his second pro fight, he fought a beautiful fight and finished the fight in the second round with a Darce choke. To kick off the main card, we opened with the flyweights. We had a tri-star product in James Mancini taking on Kendrick Latchman in a fight that was... A little bit boring. Latchman had the record advantage at 8-4 and four with 5 knockouts, while Mancini came in with just 5 wins and 4 losses. But Mancini got the decision. He got the split decision in a fight that was regarded as one of the sleepers of the night. But this card got into it by the main and co-main event. There were some exciting fights. We had a seriously scary fighter in the next fight, born in Cameroon, fighting out of Switzerland in Burton de Clos. However, the fight went entirely the way of Yoan Lanesse. At 2-0, and the Canadian showed a skilled game at range and found ways to secure takedowns and by the end of the second round they were both really really tired looked pretty gassed but Lanessa's kept the advantage throughout the fight with the skilled MMA and throughout every round nobody was able to secure a finish but Johan's third fight was a solid 30 to 27 unanimous decision I'm interested to see where the undefeated Canadian goes from here at 3 and 0 then we had TKO put on two contenders in the light heavyweight division in a fight that I personally was excited for. With the division wide open for a new champion, Mark andre Barrel out, the current light heavyweight champion for TKO, will appear in the UFC on May 4th's Ottawa card. But nonetheless, we had a contender in the light heavyweight division who has compiled a record ready for the UFC in himself. 7-1 Alan Badeau took on 9-4 Todd Stout, who was coming off a tough split decision lost in his last fight. This fight was the first unofficial semifinal for the vacant TKO light heavyweight title. As I mentioned before, the current champion is fighting now in the UFC. However, in another fight that didn't go the way I thought, Bedo used some unorthodox stand-up techniques and really looked for the spinning elbow finish after he landed one early in the second round. But by the middle of the third round, the third and final round, Stout found the submission and locked himself into a title fight in the finals of the unofficial light heavyweight tournament. Then, with three long fights in a row, we had a dominant performance from another Canadian, Xavier Aloui. He got a beautiful takedown extremely quick, found the back, and then delivered some brutal ground and pound from the back, which set up Johnny Baldridge into the rear naked choke, and the fight was ended in the first. This was a very, very good win against an opponent that looked to be in shape, that looked to have fighting experience. Aloui, who puts him down to 9-3, and three, and then we get to the co and the main event. In another crazy fight, the co-main event starred our first title fight of the night. Malcolm Gordon had a wild title defense against Yoni Sherbatov. And in a wild exchange in the first couple minutes of the round, Yoni rocked Malcolm and landed a mean liver kick. By the next three seconds, Gordon found his way into the clinch and landed a big takedown that looked like it injured Yoni. And then Malcolm gave him a little bit extra after landing a rear naked choke finish. But nonetheless, we had another title defense for the flyweight Malcolm Gordon in TKO, who's compiled a pretty good record in himself. And finally, for the evening, we had the makeshift main event. After making weight, the two-weight champion, who was scheduled to defend his lightweight belt, pulled out with a skin infection. This was Jamie Rondon. He held the welterweight and lightweight championship, and for this event, he was, he was defending the 155-pound title against the 145-pound champion coming up in Charles Jordan. But he had to find a late replacement opponent for the fact that the doctors could not clear Rondon for a medical for medical reasons, the skin infection. So they got a late replacement in Damien Lapui, who was scheduled for a fight tonight. In the crazy event, the change of opponent and the fallout, he would now be fighting for the interim 155-pound belt. Giving up a 20-fight experience, the young gun Jordan fought for every round and dealt with Lapui's grappling. The difference may be chalked up to the training and the situation, as Lapi was only supposed to fight a three-round fight, Jordan's gas tank got him through the first four rounds, and by the fifth, the exhausted Lapui fell to strikes. Nonetheless, Lapui fought a very well fight, but Jordan did a great job in neutralizing everything he needed to neutralize, and got it into the fifth and final round to where he easily finished the fight. And may I remind you that this kid, at 9-1, and one, is only 23 years of age. He only has one loss, and he's coming for the UFC. I expect that TKO is still going to do the 155-pound title. They're going to unify the interim champion, Jordan, and the current champion, Rondon, with the fight that was scheduled for tonight. And they might even schedule it for when Rondon wanted. Rondon wanted 
the fight for May. And I think Jordan is going to be up for it because he didn't really take significant damage. We're going to have to wait and see because it did go on for four rounds. There were strikes that were landed for Lapui. But nonetheless, it looks like Jordan should be able to meet that May 4th deadline. Or maybe he gets a call from the UFC. I don't know. If you watch TKO 47, let me know your thoughts of the event in the comments section below. And do you enjoy the Fight Pass events? This was, my fr this was the first Fight Pass event I actually watched because I'm trying to get into the up-and-coming MMA talent, and this is the best way to do it. Fight Pass has some of the best indie promotions on it, and a lot of the guys that fight on Fight Pass are going to make it to the UFC, and whether that's on UFC's Fight Pass pre-prelims, or whether that's the prelims, or whether that's ESPN, Fight Night, stuff like that, just like the light heavyweight champion for TKO, who's going to get his shot in the UFC on May 4th. But nonetheless, that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, remember to hit that subscribe button. The last video did amazing numbers. We hit 2,000 views. You guys don't know how much that means to me, how much that gets me excited. But during this tough time for exams, I'm really trying to get all these videos done. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, smash the like button and subscribe. But that'll do it. And peace out, guys.